program. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening. Glad to have you here today. Uh, we are going to have our OTEC pros. We apologize for the little bit delay that we have. So without wasting time, we're gonna move and give the floor to Collins. Uh, today, our team is going to talk to us about the final steps towards heading to the market by on passive. So welcome brother Collins, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Lynn, and Gladys, sorry, just Lynn, and all our all Tech Pro brothers, Oliver, um, Bob Takusi, and Andy, Great to be here. You know, we're happy for you to be part of us. And Madi, you're always on point. So, yes, yeah, so we'll be talking about, you know, the final step to the market, as um, Gladys have just said. And what, what I will do is I just want to read, you know, just exactly what we want to say today. You know, what Mr. Ash Bofara himself gave us, the topic. So the topic is about having minimum value product, MVP then sprint by Scrum managers, then a bigger product release and multiple releases, preparing the products for the marketplace and going live. So we're talking about preparing the product for the marketplace and going live, which is our main topic. But by doing this, we must look at how sprint is. So we want to, you know, not like we are educating the founders, but we want the founders to know how the product is built from scratch using the Scrum framework because Sprint is from Scrum. It's just a subset of Scrum. And we know, as you have always talk about Sprint, 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 Sprint. A lot of founders don't know what is Sprint. The Sprint is a process. It's a process that is, is incorporated in the, the, Scrum, the Scrum framework, which is part of the Agile methodology. You know, so Agile methodology have different component within. So some company will decide to go using spiral framework. Some will use rapid development. Some, most company use Scrum, which is the normal. The word Scrum come from rugby. So sometimes people talk about rugby, talk about Scrum. Means people work in a chaotic environment with an eye on the goal. What you want to achieve, that's what is the goal. So they brought that and say, well, how can we implement this? in software development or in other businesses, because Scrum is not only in IT, some business like financial company, they can decide to go using Scrum where people can easily do stuff within that, that, that framework. So I will share my screen and we look at the process. I will try to, because, because of time constraint, just to limit the time, please just bear with us. And if you think it's too short, then watch the, 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 the webinar last night with Mr. Ash Mufara, where, appear and you'll get an overview of what we want to be talking here. So let me share my screen and let's go through the process. So can you see my screen? Just thumb up, can you see my screen? So let's look at it from the Agile perspective. So Agile is a methodology, it's an Agile Scrum framework. What is Scrum? So Scrum is a framework within which people can address complex adaptive problem why productively and creatively delivering products of the highest possible quality, value. So the value is the quality. How you can address complex issues and you make it so simple in a manner that you can produce a product of the highest possible value. That is the, the, the definition. There is no way you can go because Scrum is complex. And sometimes you look at technology, it, the information is so complex because of the complexity, you need to break it down into something that the engineer will understand and they can start to develop the programs or the services and product that is acceptable in the entire globe. And this is what, when we talk about Scrum, that's what we know now that that is what OnPassive is using that particular framework. That is what they are using. Mr. Ash himself confirmed it yesterday. So let's look at Scrum. I will just go to the next slide. This is how it is, just diagram in front of you. So Mr. Ash Mufara has everything in his mind. Put a team of developers, you know, team of managers, all of them in Scrum, there is no title, but he just put those people based on their expertise and their experience, put them together and said, I want this. For instance, look at Omer, look at 
our O founder or Go founder, all what we have in our arsenal. That's how they develop it. It came with an idea. I want this. Mr. Ash is acting, although he's our CEO, he's acting as a user. And you know, within that framework, he said, okay, I want to build 100 screen. I want to build this, 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 this. Now you have all of those people, they sat back and they'll look at it and said, okay, one person who is like the, the head, but not like the head, has a title, though we don't have title, but he is called product owner. He will say to Mr. Ash, okay, you want this. Tell us what is the priority? I would say that, that, that they are like project managers, but in Scrum, they call them product owner. He said, this, 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 this I want. Now they will collect out and put it in a, in a program or just little box called the product backlog. You know, that is where everything they want to achieve, you know, within that time frame or year or years, months and years, they will put it in product backlog and they'll sort them in order of priorities or preference. So they will look at it and said, okay, let me bring part of engineers, those who will be working on that, pro that program, come, let's sit in a meeting. That meeting is called spring planning meeting. That meeting can take eight, nine hours, the whole day of your life. You sit there in that meeting. Take one of that function, which Mr. Ash before I said, this is our priority I want us to develop. So I want you to develop the admin screen. And that particular part, the product owner will write it in the form of a user story. What is a user story? He said, as a user, I want to be able to lock onto this screen, or I want a screen, a functionality where all my customers can go in or all my employees can log in and do their job effectively. That's a user story. It's really vague. Because if you tell an engineer like that, you say, yes, it's vague. Tell me, what do you want on that screen? Do you want a login screen? Do you want, you want password this? What are the parameters within all of that? they will sit back and break it down in that sprint planning meeting. In that sprint planning meeting, they will look at it, they break it down into a smaller chunk. They can take one user story, break it down into smaller component called acceptance criteria. We need, we need this, we need that, we need that, the ticket, 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 good. Now they are good to go. They remove that particular chunk, put it in a box called the sprint backlog. I'm just calling it a box, but they just arrange it in a, in a way. And that particular where they are taking their job is called Spring backlog, that spring backlog, it is where the job that they will do for that particular spring. I will explain what is a spring. So you look at it, you say, this is what we'll do in that particular spring. Spring can last for two weeks. Highest minimum is two weeks, maximum is four weeks. Spring cannot go more than four weeks. You have to develop a workable part of the software that is acceptable by the customer. You have to develop. That is not, that is, there is no game. Either you are in or you are out. That's how, that's how, that's how Scrum framework works. Either you develop it or the next day you are fired. Two weeks, are we accept, do we accept? Yes. There is one man called the, 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 the Scrum master. He is the, the bridge between the product owner, the managers, and would say, Mr. Ash Mufara is there. Okay, Mr. Ash is saying, put this, put that, put that. That's, that Scrum Master is the gap because he needs to keep the team because the team is the developers, the testers, everything co combined. Security guys, he is the one who sit there, he or she is the one who sit there and make sure those teams concentrate on the tasks at hand. No interference, no nothing. Mr. Ash can say this, no, we said no, we, we have committed and we want to because that's two weeks you have to deliver. Because if Mr. Ash came and make a chance, it's really vital, they really want to change it they will call it scope change. And you can extend the time, maybe one or two days for them to have time to understand it and develop it. Get five happy days. If you said that is what they want to do, they sit within that two weeks, develop it. But within that two weeks, they'll be having daily meeting, daily meeting, they call it daily stand-up meeting. In that meetings, the team will sit, initiated by the, the, the scrum master. Come, we have meeting, maybe nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, let's sit. And that in, within that meeting, that meeting lasts only for 15 minutes. Each member of the team will say what you did yesterday, what you are doing today. If you have any issues, explain it now. You have anything that is tying that not to achieve the target for that day, say it. Maybe I can say, I need Bob to show me something because Bob is an expert of this. Okay, Bob, please, can you go in and show Collins? Bob will come and say, X, Y, Z, do it. So they work in that type of environment where there is no room for an error. And within the Scrum framework, 
Mr. Ash Mufala can make change. The customer can make change as they go. They can look at it and make change. And that is why Scrum methodology has three, three principles. This, you have transparency, you have, you have adaptation, and you have inspection. So you have transparency means you can see through and Mr. Ash can say, no, no, this is not going well, let's change it. Adaptation means you can change it at any time because it is really there. there there's the room for change before they build the final software. And there is what inspection means. Every day that daily stand-up meeting is to inspect, inspect what they are doing. Now, within that two weeks of spring, done, they go in, put it in that box called incre increment box, incremental box. That is where every workable software that they have built, that, that solution will be in there. And then we will come and review it, our CEO, let me call it in our process. Mr. Ashford will come review it. They call it spring review. Oh, Mr. Ash always uses the word demo, demo, the, the demo product for me. That is called spring review. When Mr. Ash can review and say, oh, remove this, add this there, you know what? Oh, yes, it is good. Happy days. Let's go into next meeting, retrospective. What is retrospective meeting, spring meeting? It's a meeting where you sit back, look at what you have done and say, wow, we did this. Oh, that was great. Oh, we had this issue when we're doing this. How do we mitigate that? So next time when we move to the next sprint, we don't have to do that again. They don't look at it. They look at stormy days. You know, they look at it difficult and say, oh, next time we have to do this because if we don't do this, the product will be horrible. Take that down. Sunny days. What are we going to keep? Anything that we have to keep. And within that retrospective, you have to come with the definition of done. That is transparency. What is done when it comes to Bob? Bob is a security person. What is, what is done when it comes to Braulio? What is done when it comes to, for instance, uh, Andy? What is the definition? And Ms. Andrew can say, this is my definition. So the team sit down and craft the definition of done. When you said the software is done, Ms. Ash can say, when it is in the hands of customer, Developer can say, when we have done our job, tester can say 70% of the box free, all of those things, we have tested the product. And they can say, let's go by Mr. Ash's definition. You do this, you do that, and they craft a definition. Yes, Mr. Ash said, I'm happy that product is done. And that is the principle they will go through. So now let's look at the definition of spring. So a spring is a set of period of time during which a specific work has to be completed and made ready for review. That is spring. Spring is a time box. You have a time. And if you look at it, planning meeting is nine hours or seven hours the whole day. You have spring retrospective is 90, 90 hours, one hour, 30 minutes. You have spring st daily stand up, 15 minutes. You know, that's just a time box, time box, time box, because you don't have time, room for anything. Review the same, 90, 90 minutes, look at the product, demo it, that's it. Now, let's look at spring. If you look at the spring, this diagram just illustrates what is spring. So you have one cycle of spring. You plan, you design, you develop, you test, you deploy, and re review. When you review, you launch. Look at our product, what Mr. Ashford gave us. Initial product. When you develop that, you have the initial product that is acceptable to market, and then you start to stack the code, stack the code, stack the code, until you have a full-blown product, like what Mr. Ashford told, told us, the full-blown old mail of this, they are all ready. Then now continuous releases means you can, you will not stop there. The moment you hit the market, you have to continue, continue and release and release. If not, your, your product will be outdated. You must add new things. Now at, is the point we are ready for the market. I think Bra Oliver will talk about that. Now let's look at spring value. What are the value for you to be, to be able to work in this environment? There are, there are five uh, uh, things you need to know. You, you must be courageous. You must have focus in the job you are doing. You must be committed. Respect is the order of the day. If you don't respect your team members, your colleagues, and you know you start to make them feel horrible, you are fired. That is it. Openness means if you are not able to do something, speak out. Say, you know what? Give me more time. Don't say, yes, I'll do it. Within two weeks, you are, you are not able to deliver. You are fired. That's it. Commitment, openness, and courage. That is what we need in Scrum. And then look at this. We talk about our type of testing, alpha testing, internal, all the tests that go in, and then we have beta testing where we are doing now. What we are doing now is beta test. So I will leave it there. I will not take it too much, and I'll give the floor back to our sister um, uh, Gladys to take it from there. Thank you. Uh, oh, Lynn is in. I'm here. 
Thank well, you, Gladys, for, for covering for me till I got in today. Sorry, everybody. Um, Collins, that was an excellent presentation on the Scrum framework. And I feel that it is a very dynamic framework and also advantageous for on passive because we see the results. When you look at on passive at the massive number of software products it has been able to create in a relatively short period of time, I believe that it's because we are utilizing the Scrum framework. So I think Ash Mofara in his wisdom selected the best possible framework for this company. So I'm very grateful to him. All right, next we have Oliver, Oliver Fonte, who is gonna be discussing security. Go ahead, Oliver. Yeah, hi, good day and good, um, uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm um, Andy, nice seeing you here with us today. And uh, Madi, you know, thank you, bro. Despite the fact that you're sick, you're here with us today. And um, Lynn, yeah, we know you're a machine. So for, if you're coming late, it's okay. And I also want to, I also want to apologize to our audience, to the founders that are here, that we are sorry that we, that we are late. You know, things happen. And when things happen, we have to adjust. Yeah, let me just dive straight to the, to the topic. Um, uh, my brother Collins just talked about, um, let me also appreciate my friend Bob, bro. <laughs> nice being here with us and uh, Collins, good job. And um, the topic that, as Colin just put it, Chrome framework, the Agile Chrome framework. And uh, I will talk about the security, about the Agile Chrome framework, and then also talk about the preparing the products for marketplace and going viral, which is going to the, to the public. The security, when we talk about the Agile um, Chrome framework, we have to also look at the security, especially the backlogs, the backlog and the, the spring backlog. That is where all what they are doing, the developers, the database guys, security, they, that's where they go store all what they are doing. Then that, that environment, all the data that are there has to be secured. And we should also remember that we are working in, in an AI environment. Our products are all in, you know, embedded with AI from scratch, right? you know? So then with the, the automation, 100% and integration. So after they've put everything together, they have their spring, as my brother Colin just put it, they, it, they, it goes to the back, it goes to the back, the, the backlog and the spring backlog that they, they, go, they go retrieve all their data from there, start working on it. And like Colin says, it's a chaotic environment, chaotic environment that, you know, you have to respect and make sure that wherever those data are, are safe and they are secured. Come also to, come also to that, the security that is introduced in the earlier, in the life cycle of, of, um, of the development minimizes the vulnerability and the security there is also very tight because uh, they deal with complex coding. The, the, the developer that, that they write the code, you know, those are complex code, you know. Then we talk about the database guys also. They are also all, the, is our, like we said last time, the database is secure. Our database is secure. So much so, much so that nobody can penetrate. Nobody can penetrate into our into our database. And the eight hours that they are working on, that they retrieve data from their data from, from, from there is also secure. I will have to make sure that the Scrum, and when does security start? Security starts from the beginning, the first phase of the planning. You have to make sure that security is involved from all the phases, all the phases. The way it comes now also to the last phase, and each phase, they have to test it. When, Test the security, test everything, all the functionality from the from the other phase to the next phase. They move to phase two. They will test the security, test all the functionality from all the from the database guys, also getting to the code that the developer that they write the code. They have to test everything. Then come now to the last phase that it needs to be need to be tested and to roll out. They will not just roll them out without testing them again. They have to test them now in a non-production environment. That is a replicate of a production environment, you know. So much so that when they like, like when like I said yesterday, when we move from all founders and go founders to all founders that were we were now on the live environment, all from the go founders was secure. It was the security there was good, and they pull it over to our live environment. That's where we are now. That we now we are moving now into our direct center that is hybrid, which is good. We are, we, are, we are at the top of the game. 
So all that it has to be secured. And when it's secured before, before they roll it out viral to the public, they have to do what we call penetration testing. There are two types of tests. We have the penetration testing and automated penetration testing. The pen test is the one-time manual that the ethical hacker, that I forgot I heard that our CEO has hired some ethical hackers that they will hack the system, hack the system, pound it, secure it up to the point that it will get to the point that they, that they are confident that nobody can penetrate. Then after that, they're going into the automated penetration testing. That can be one, one every one month, or that can be three months, depending on how the Hyderabad team, they want to do it. That is when now we say that, okay, we can go viral with this product. And remember, all the products goes through the same process. All the products from all trim, from all staff, goes through the same process. So for us to take this amount of year in less than three years, now, now we want to go to the public. It's mind-blowing and it's a miracle that we can't we can really talk about it. But I think our CEO and the guy and the tech guys, they've done a wonderful job on that. We should give them kudos on that. Now, let me talk about pre pre I'm, I'm preparing the products for marketplace and going viral, the security that is there. We all understand that we do have our cloud that is a hybrid. On-prem, data center, cloud, that goes, which is a hybrid. Now, that is virtual, that you can access your data wherever you are on this planet Earth. The, the security that is there also is unspeakable. The, the CEO told us the other day about laser that is now on top of the fiber optic cables. This is, I'll leave that to my brother Bob to, to talk about that. But before any product goes out, the security around our data center, hybrid data center, is in fact unspeakable. Remember also that we have firewalls from the static firewall to the dynamic firewalls. I'm very sorry because of time constraint, I will not be able to break those things down. But I just want to give you the high, higher level firewalls that we have. And it's also hybrid, the firewalls that is in many, many locations all over the world. So because we don't trust anything that comes from the internet. So when it comes from the internet, bam, it fades the, our firewalls. That is, is also secure by SSL certificate that the CEO told us that all the domain, they're going to have it. So we, are, we have a CEO that is, um, is very conscious about security and uh, we have to secure. Before, from the that from our firewalls now comes, hits now our environment. As it hits our environment, AI, artificial intelligence is there also, you know? Anything AI comes with its own security. You cannot be that. And before it get to our AI cloud, data center, hybrid, it's, un, it's unspeakable. Look at our IPV, Internet Protocol version six, that is also hybrid from four to six, but the version six comes with its own security that I'm so proud, I'm happy when I look at Gmail, bam, they have junk mail. Yahoo, they have junk mail. When you come to us on passive, omail.ai, there's no junk mail folder. You know, that speaks, that speaks volume. Who will not use on passive product? Will you see those type of differences? Because our, our security setup is sophisticated, superior, you know? And, and, you know, we are on top, we are on top. Let me give some, let me give a little bit of four features of uh, um, um, AI security cloud security that blocks that we, nobody can penetrate into us. The first one is, to event, is event, is event uh, prediction that our AI security predict future attacks event. The security can also reveal attack and event that may happen where threat may come from end of the creation. It dictate and it block and, and they, will, they will, I will have our tech guys, the security guys that will remediate or, or mitigate those those risks that comes in immediately, immediately, it will not stay. Come again, automation dictation action. The, our automated dictation action in AI respond almost instantly to any threat. The automation in our AI also dictate the attack and it will lock or block any port. Then our, our tech guys will fix it, look what is going on. And, when, and that, that, that one is an automatic block also from to, to our system, so you can't even get in. We also we also have the the real time monitoring and alert. It takes control and react problems. It also takes control and react problem and also 
let everyone knows that it has happened. When the time and the, the time and the word day, it will block it also and give us the time. We also have the robust dictation control and the robust dictation con control, there's the security and the vulnerability that, that is there, that it is also on um, a block on authorized, on authorized bad guys to, to, to come into us, even in-house. Even in-house threats, we have in-house threats. It will also block them. They will not be able to have access to some, to some, to any kinds of um, data anymore until they investigate them. So I don't want to take much time. See, we are running out of time. I want to say um, to thank everybody that are here, and uh, let's take it from there. Antilene, thank you. Thank you, Oliver. And as you can see, unpassive security standards are the very highest in the industry. We can rest assured that security will never be an issue for on passive. Thank you very much. We have till 12.20 uh, p.m. today, so we've got about 25, oh, half an hour more. So we, we should be able to have our other speakers do their thing without any issue. Um, let's see, so now we have uh, Bob Takusi, and Bob Takusi is gonna be speaking about laser internet technology and compliance. Please take the floor, Bob. Uh, yes, Anseline, um, good to see you. Good evening uh, or good morning, good afternoon to our fellow founders in England uh, and around the world. Good to see you, Collins, Andy. It's a pleasure seeing you. Brother Madi, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> you know, lots of stories are going to be told about, uh, about Unpassive when we launch. You know, lots of stories about the founder, about us, about... Um, the services, the products, the delivery of passive is not only delivering to, uh, to businesses, but also to, to people. It's a people and business uh, company. But one thing that is going to be talked of more about on passive that is coming, especially by technology people, folks that are in technology, is the time frame that it took for the delivery of this product. The time frame that it took is amazing. When you understand the scope, the magnitude, and the actual time that we began the process. And the sole reason why, why where we are, we're talking about preparing for the marketplace is because of the approach, the agile scrum framework that my brothers have brilliantly explained. Collins has already laid it out. We don't need to speak much about it, but the approach, Mr. Ash Mufara has brilliantly brought in the, 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 the brain box, the minds, the various teams. You bring those teams together, they write their stories, and then they develop the solution. On, in each sprint, they develop the solution so that you get what you want. And then they compound. Our founder always talks about compounding. This is one of the cases where we, we, we now have to remember that the compounding is not only towards the end in marketing and other things. We have been compounding from the inception of the development of this product. So in each sprint, when it comes to us, it comes to him, he reviews it, they take it back, they compound and compound until they get the minimum value product. You know, And another part of this product, and when you listen to Collins, the last aspect of his slide was testing functional uh, the testing, alpha and beta testing of the product. So we have to test to make sure it is ready to, to roll out. So there are several things that is being done. The security team that, that test, they do manual automated testing, integration testing, data uh, security testing, everything that Oliver just said. That, that is what is happening on each of this, of this sprint. And then our database testing. The database is the most critical aspect of every company, every corporation, every company, the data, where your data resides. Everything happens from the database. Everything is stored into the database. So now we have a data center. As our founder told us yesterday, we are migrating, we are moving, we are going live into our own environment, our own premises, which is a huge, huge step, a huge deal. And then he, he, he gave us a, a, a wonderful news on Wednesday, and he continued yesterday by telling us that we also have laser internet technology added into our 
data center in our, into our, into our systems. What that means is like, I, as I explained yesterday, just let's not look, let's not make it complex. Let's look at it in a very easy, understandable light. Assume that you have, you are a sniper, you know, these military guys who can shoot at a distance of 50 miles. You are at a, the roof of a, the top roof of a building and you have your sight 50 miles away. There's a laser that gets you to that target. You use your, your gun, you point the laser, the laser sets your target and then you shoot. The, the shot is being guided by the laser, right? This is exactly what is happening here with us, what our founder is telling us. With our laser internet technology that is being used in our system, remember one, we have artificial intelligence. We are not only relying on artificial intelligence or our fiber optic cables, which are connected, hooked up to the internet and they are fast, they travel at the speed of light. We are also adding, we are also compounding. That's what Mr. Mufara has just done. He has compounded it by adding another sophisticated layer because our systems are sophisticated. We are secured, we are sophisticated and we are, we are, we, we, we are, we are superior, right? So the laser is just like a ping, a guidance is going, it, it, it pings or it, it makes sure that the destination where this, where this data is traveling to at the other end of the world, it, it, it pings that device and then the data travels. Using our fiber, our fiber, our fiber optic cables, which is very fast as the speed of light, guided by the laser. That's just what, what our, our founder is saying. So our system is built, it's a 21st century technology. So new technology has come in that we are adding, we are compounding into our system just to make it better and, and you know, much, much attractive than every other company. Remember, our data center at some point is gonna be hosting other companies. We are gonna be better and cheaper. So most other companies are gonna to come to us for us to host their, host their systems. So he's bringing this modern technology we're starting with it, but eventually it's going to be something that the whole world is going to be scrambling to get their hands on. So in a nutshell, that's what our, the, the laser technology that our founder talks about is it's just something that guides it pings. And then the one beauty, one advantage of this laser technology is that it, it, it has no boundary. Remember when you have your laser pointed to something and you get that, that um, target and you shoot, nothing stops you. The shot goes uh, before the target, even before they hear the sound, the target is down. Nothing stops you. So this the technology takes you anywhere in the world, no matter how remote you are, in the desert or in the jungles of Papua New Guinea or in Cameroon, where we come from, Unpassive founders or users of Unpassive products are going to have access to our data center. That is just what um, this is all about. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about compliance. Uh, we also know that we are very, very highly compliant. Right now, we have lawyers all over the world. They are working with various countries, their various departments, commerce, whatever, to make sure that we are abiding by their laws, by their rules and their regulation. And as we do that, our systems are going to be able to have, as with the guidance of artificial intelligence, there are systems, there are products that can help us or know whether we we have complied with this country or not in order for them to have access to our systems. We also have anti-money laundry, also embedded, our founder told us the other day. So most of these uh, uh, scammers who are out there, they're not going to have it easy with us, with Unpassive. Unpassive is bad news to them. I've said that several times because artificial intelligence is, is like a flashlight that is over the systems. It's just like a flash, a, a, a light bulb that is, just hovering around and highlighting everything that's going on. Or like a big building, like the Bush Khalifa building. Just imagine Bush Khalifa building that we see, that massive building, all the offices, all the doors, all the rooms. You have a security guard standing in front of every door and inspecting everybody in and out, checking, making sure you have the right credentials to come in or monitoring what you're doing. Like Oliver said, there is no way these cameras are going to get into us. We are going to comply. Money, anti-money laundry. People are not going to be able to use our old wallet. This, this, first of all, this, this old wallet is very secure. Like Oliver said, has this SSL certificate that authenticate each transaction. Make sure you are who you are, and the source is coming from the right place, and the data is encrypted. So they will not, they will not get into us. You know, 
I'm just in a hurry here, but so make sure we, we are very, 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 very compliant when it comes to compliance. And the countries that are not yet, we have not yet fully uh, uh, you know, met their compliance, we are going to. The lawyers are doing all they can to make sure that we get to, to, to the right place before we operate with them. And then of course, how prepared for the marketplace? We have, it's, it's all said and done. Our products are superior. We have the products, the products that Unpassive has, I'm sure someday we're going to find time to discuss about the products just to align, outline you know, the differences, what we bring to the market. What it will bring is something that most companies are going to gravitate towards. You know, And then, of course, our founder is now doing what to the marketplace, branding us, preparing for the marketplace so that we get the, the market knows us. We started that on March 30th in, in, in Dubai, and he's compounding the, 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 the marketing of moving to India, coming to the United States, going around, preparing the minds of the people to, to remember that there's a company that's coming and uh, it's called Unpassive. So I'm going to just leave it there and send it back to you, Auntie Lynn, in the interest of time. <clears throat> Thank you very much for covering internet, uh, laser internet technology and compliance. I believe Unpassive is in a great place. It is in the forefront of technology at all times and their security is unparalleled. Thank you very much. Next, we move on to Andy Burks. Uh, let me talk about Andy Burks real shortly before we begin. You may recognize Andy Burks because he is on the corporate guest webinars and he is called the numbers guy. He's very, very, very competent when it comes to numbers, but professionally, his background is sales. He has done sales for many decades. So I know he's very excited about today's topic and we're gonna let Andy take it away. Welcome, Andy. Uh, thanks guys. Uh, and thanks Lynn for explaining that I've been in sales for decades. <laughs> I'm not that old, but uh, anyway, yes. Um, <clears throat> I, I love the minimum value products that this, this, the company brings because what they are is a hook. In sales, everybody needs a hook. So you have a product that is free. People join to use that product. Now they become a customer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of a sudden, they get to learn all about the other products and the other products and the other products and the other bits and pieces. So that hook has created millions of customers that come on board specifically to use a free product initially. But as they start to, to learn and see the value that on Passive has created, they become customers. Now, <clears throat> we've already, um, Ash has already said that the, the data center um, is being ramped up in order to be able to take a billion customers. And the next data center will add on to that and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and as Bob said, um, there are going to be various different types of customer. There are going to be the customers that come on board to use the minimum value products initially and then become customers over time. So they're individuals, but you've also got the company set up. Now, what I like about this in particular is the encryption, the security aspect, because certainly from a finance point of view, <clears throat> being, having been in financial services for a long time, um, a long time. Everything we do, everything we have to send to customers has to be at highest level security because you can't simply send something through on an email um, in case it's hacked, in case somebody else or that data gets out. So we all understand data protection as well, <clears throat> but this takes it to the next level. So you're going to have Individuals come on to use minimum value products and become customers very quickly because they're going to start seeing the value that the company has brought to bear. Then you're going to see individuals, you're going to see companies, and those companies are going to come in for various different reasons. First and foremost, we're going to see them um, come in because we're able to provide specific targeted traffic. Now, specific targeted traffic to a company like Adidas or Nike, for instance, is absolutely crucial. If they're spending millions and millions a month on advertising to get their products out there, 
but it's haphazard. We all know what um, Google clicks are or Facebook clicks or whatever. It's haphazard. If you've got specific targeted traffic, it's going to bring these companies on board by their droves just for that that type of, of requirement to get specific targeted traffic to find the customers that need their or want their products more than any, anything else. So their costs are going to come down. And that brings in more profit from passive. And then obviously part of that gets fed back to the, to, to the founders. So you've got individuals and companies. You've also got the side of the governments and government's going to look at this from various different perspectives. The first perspective is I've got a one time sign on. Single sign on to have all of the suite under one roof in one go. So for, as, as Susie has mentioned in, in previous webinars that we've had, um, when you're doing or dealing with human resources, you've got various different entities that you need to go back and forth and back and forth in and out of and in and out of. Sign on to this one. Remember the password for that. Oh, I've forgotten it. Right. I've got to go to the tech guys. It's a time saver. So, again, from that perspective, you've got sizable institutions going to look at this for a single sign on point of view, a time saver. All of these things brings in clients and all of these customers be they individuals, corporations, governments, etc., are going to utilise the products that we have on board. Now, I particularly like the minimum value products from the point of view that that customer becomes log logged to you for life. So as these guys come on board, let's take, I don't like using the word, but let's use Facebook as an example. Our system is going to provide far more security than Facebook does. I'm sure, hand on heart, I, I've been caught out before by finding something on Facebook, an advert, oh, that's interesting, yes, I'll buy that, and it never arrives because it was a bogus setup. You can't do that with OnPassive because you have to prove who you are to have an account because every person that comes on as a customer has to be to go through that process of money, anti-money laundering in case they click the button in the top corner and become a reseller. And now they're starting to earn an income from it. And therefore, we need to prove who they are. So all of this trawling, all of this um, uh, bogus and scams that we have just from a Facebook eradicated, gone. Now you have a system in place it's a free system, let's face it, but you can talk to your friends in safety and security knowing, yeah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So all of these things create more and more opportunities for customers to look at, consider, come on board. So if we're geared up to be able to take a billion customers and we take on just 100 million in our first year, we're still in the top 1%. This is incredible. There's never been anything like this before and there probably will never be anything like it again. I hope that helps, Auntie Lynn. That is powerful beyond words. Uh, and I think your perspective is a good one because, you know, as the tech guys here, that is what they do, IT, day in and day out. That's how they spend their waking hours and some of their non-waking hours as well. They probably dream about IT as well. But it's nice to have a, the sales perspective and you see how the components of OnPassive provides a forum for success. You know, there is, that targeted traffic is amazing. You know, that is a, it's going to give everyone an equal playing field for one thing. It doesn't matter what your background is, everybody is going to be getting customers and sales are going to be made and money is going to be made. So that's very powerful. The single sign on again, what you we just discussed is also a very, very big thing because as you say, companies as well as government is going to use the single sign on and see how much it saves them in terms of time and convenience, right? There's a lot of convenience in this system that we offer and the minimum value product as well. And I see how beginning with just the targeted traffic, people coming to check out on passive, then becoming customers and some of them becoming resellers, right, Andy? So, and everybody's gonna try everything. We, I mean, they're gonna see everything we have for one thing, 
they maybe they come for one thing, but they see, oh my, there's an array of other things that are very, very attractive to them. So they start buying other things within our ecosystem. So this system that OnPassive has is just beautiful. If, it if is, think right? It, Would you say, Angie? Yeah, if you, if you think about it, Lynn, <clears throat> if you've got a, a, a system where someone comes on board, let's say they come on board to use an email marketing system. Now, we know there are various different products out there, but they have a limitation as to the number of people that you can email to. Yeah. So and as you get more on board, the cost goes up, the cost goes up. So this is just one of the suite of products, but they pay for that. So they come on board to use that product. And over time, as customers come on board and fall within the group, there's a little button in the top corner that says, Mr. Customer, did you know that if you become a reseller, you can have that money in this wallet? Which means they start getting paid to use the product that they originally signed up for. Now, who in their right mind would then move to another company where they have to pay for a, a, a product again, knowing that we have a far superior opportunity to use, first and foremost, we've got a suite of 50 different products, you're not paying for one, uh, and you're being paid to use them. Now, how many customers can the company take on board? That's an incredible opportunity. Yes, yes. And in, in addition to that, when customers come to Unpassive, they're going to see something different. And that is the fact that these products, everything we have is unmetered, unrestricted, unlimited uses. And that is unheard of within IT. I'm sure Bob, Oliver and Collins have an opinion about this as well, because they see how these products are being used in the industry. Correct. Feel free to chime in. Yeah, very, very correct. One, I want to talk about licensing. Most companies, Andy, like you're saying, when you, you let's say, you subscribe to this software, you're using it, you can't be, you, you subscribe for it, you pay, and then you have licenses per user. You know, there's an agreement per user agreement, maybe it's 50 or 100 users for that company that is using that license. At the end of the year, you have to renew it, you repay again. On passive eliminates all that when, when you talk about on meter. On passive is a win-win-win for only not only for 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 us the, the the regular folk but also for companies. Yeah, let me also chip in. In addition to that, our price, the price. When you look at let, let us take we don't like calling names here, but maybe for the for the benefit of that, look at Zoom for example. Look at Zoom for example. One product. Look at the price that they do sell uh, Zoom out there. Look at the price. O Connect is coming. Look at the value O Connect is going to bring on. It's going to put on the table. Draw screen sharing. Draw screen sharing. For the translation time that I think Bob asked the CEO yesterday about it, it had to be translated. You can share screen. Like Bob said yesterday, he was struggling with the boss. They, they, they wanted to buy a product. They cannot share their screen. That is big. That is game over for, for, for Cisco WebEx, Zoom, and Teams, Microsoft Teams, it's game over. Then the licenses thing, like Bob just said, is what is killing a lot of companies. 100 users, you pay this amount of money. Then you, on top of it, you pay yearly subscription. Yearly subscription, they are sucking blood out of companies. But on passive will come, cut down the price, unlimited, we are there. We are there. And then look at all staff. Another product that is going to kill the market. Everything you want to think about human resource, bam, is in old staff. Cost effective. Our CEO will reduce the price for that. You know, then like biometric, that they will send you to go to a medical center to go and do whatever, or in another center to go do your fingerprint. We have everything in house on inside your old staff. And O staff comes with other applications. O counting, maybe O connect. I think when, they, when he showed it was about nine or eight or nine of them. Cost the price is going to drop. CEOs will refer other CEOs to come to us. They will refer their colleagues to come to us. That is the branding that we've already brand. We used our price. No, uh, the value of our products, bam, is there. The, we always talk here about the SSS, superior, secured, sophisticated. 
There is none of our products that nobody. The only products that you will see out there now in the market that is embedded with artificial intelligence, 100, 100% automated and integrated, all our products. No licenses, no licenses will be involved. Thank you. Can I can I just add a, a, a little bit from a sales point of view? Um, it, I've been in financial services for many years, and 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 a, a lot of the companies have international um, uh, companies work outside or work offshore, um, uh, but they have consultants all all around the globe. Now, if you if you took a um, uh, a sizable company, and the CEO said let's use this system to be able to communicate with the management in the various different countries. But they then said to the managers, look, what you need to do is you need to come on board and use these products. So they become a customer. Yeah. So now you've got the, the, the company and they've got the managers that have come on board to use the products. Now the managers are going to tell their consultants because the consultants can then keep in touch with the manager using OPIR or, or whatever it might be. Um, but again, from a financial services point of view, everyone's trying to get quality leads to be able to talk to more people. So the manager then tells the consultants, the consultants start to use it and they start to use it for specific targeted traffic. The coordinators that book appointments start to use it as well. So now the company has this chain of customers already in their group. Every single customer that they then talk to they encourage to use OConnect. Mr. Customer, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a video conferencing meeting. Please follow this link. Like you do with Zoom. Yep. So now a customer or a potential customer comes on board. They're linked now to this consultant. Now, whether they use the product on a regular basis or not is irrelevant. They're now linked to that that customer. Now, I know as a sales guy that if you see 10 people, two are going to say yes, no matter what, and two are going to say no, no matter what. It's the other six that you could potentially convert. But if you're talking to 10 people, you've got 10 potential customers with an passive. End of story. Because they're now coded to you. So how big do you think or how much money do you think a company can actually get in if they've got a number of consultants? And let's say they've got 20,000 existing customers. Let's talk to all of the existing customers. Any sales company that has that set up has the capability to earn an additional revenue, whether they then pass that back to the consultants or the sales reps or whatever is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is that they come on board to use it for specific targeted traffic, for O-Net, um, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, O-Commerce, um, and the O-Connect, et cetera. All of these people then become customers. It then goes viral. That's one company. Government's going to do the same. They say to their, their um, uh, employees, look, guys, you need to get onto this system to be able to use this OPR and blah, blah, blah. I suggest you sign up. They become customers and so on and so forth. And there it reaches a point where that curve actually becomes, well, it's unstoppable. And we have potentially 4.7 billion Internet customers today. But that's individuals. If you add on the companies that then, yeah, there's another billion. If you add more products to it, it adds to the number of potential customers. And us as founders, we're 1.3 million founders. We're at the very top of the tree. Oh my word, if we were in the top 1% of Microsoft after it launched, where do you think we would be right now? I know one thing, I wouldn't have sold my uh, my shares for uh, a pizza or whatever it was, $80. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andy. So uh, I think we're going to end in a few minutes, but I wanted to, to go over a little bit of what we discussed today. We talked about some of the superb features of Unpassive, what Unpassive offers the world. And we talked about the fact that our products are superior secure and sophisticated. That comes from Bob Takusi, the three S's, and it helps us. It's a mnemonic device to help us remember the things that we love about Unpassive. 
We also talk about the fact that OnPassive offers the highest value to the world in its products and services. We talked about automation and integration, superior features right there, automation integration, that's a big deal. We also talked about the fact that we have cutting edge technology. We are ahead of the game at every, every minute, every hour, we have, we're way ahead of the game in terms of technology. We also talk about the sales advantages of OnPassive and Andy enumerated some of those advantages and the fact that the targeted traffic then produces a lot of leads, which then become conversions to customers and resellers. So this is why our topic today was final steps to the market, you know, and uh, we'll be having the next webinar coming up in about 10 minutes at 12.30 p.m. We have the Kenya webinar. We have our OTEC pros that are gonna be talking about this topic during the Kenya webinar. So head on over there. It is posted in the back office. The link is right there for you. So go to the back office. Uh, let me see, am I missing anything? Anything I'm missing you guys? So we're gonna head over to the Kenya webinar. Know that this webinar is every Saturday at 11 a.m. We discuss topics that are suggested to us by Ash Mofara himself. So once you come to this webinar, you know it's an important topic because Ash Mofara is guiding the OTEC pros in what we should be teaching all of you. So we appreciate your attendance and support of this webinar and we'll see you at the Kenya webinar. Thank you, Andy, for being our special guest speaker. You brought in perspectives that we would not normally think about. Thank you all for being here and we'll see you next week for OTEC Pros. Thank you very much. Bye-bye everyone.